and we are back at full strength this week for regional radio high school football coverage. Our web TV exclusive game returns for round two of district playoff action. We are at St. Genevieve High School this evening on the Dragons home field as the 9-1 St. Genevieve Dragons are just a few minutes away from opening round two against the 5-5 five and five Potosi Trojans. The St. Genevieve Dragons of 2015, a much different team what they were in 2014. A team last year saw their season come to an end on this very field. Again, it's the Kennett Indians, but that was uh, last year, and this year's team comes in at 9-1. and one. The only loss this season for the St. Genevieve Dragons came in Week 2 on this field against the Valley Catholic Warriors. That was 51-22. This uh, Potosi Trojan team comes in at 5-5, five and five, kind of stumbled down the last portion of the regular season, lost their final three games at Valley hosting North County, and then were shut out in Week 9 at DeSoto. But the Trojans bounce back, defeating St. Pius in Potosi last week, 25-8. to So it should be an interesting contest as these two teams meet up for the second time this season. The first matchup was in Potosi at Week 4, and it was a 41-19 win when it was all said and done for St. Genevieve in Week 4. But that game went to the break tied up at 13. So you never know, Potosi hung with St. Genevieve pretty well in in week four, what happened in the second half is St. Genevieve just pulled away as the Potosi Trojans started to uh, have to deal with injury issues in that week four matchup. But talking to Coach Casey prior to tonight's contest, he believes this may be the healthiest Potosi Trojan team that they've had all season long. And for St. Genevieve, mostly everyone is going to step in. A lot of seniors on these two teams, so it's going to be either a collection of 15 seniors in green tonight playing their final game in the, their home Jersey, or it's going to be the visiting Potosi Trojans who field 10 seniors, and uh, somebody's going to be playing their final high school football game in their uniforms this evening. But who will that be? We've got four quarters to find out. St. Genevieve, a tough team to beat at this time of year as they've uh, pretty much kept ascending since the week two loss to Valley Catholic. St. Genevieve has looked like a completely different animal, a well-oiled machine, and uh, some of the better teams that we cover in the area from the Central Rebels to uh, a defensively a DeSoto team that's pretty tough. Uh, have done quite well. The two uh, running backs for St. Genevieve and Rowe and Brewer Two of the better running backs that we see in the area, and that for that to be a one-two punch, I mean, either of those guys could probably step in on most teams that we see inside the listening area and start. So to have both those guys coming out of your backfield, a big plus for the St. Genevieve Dragons, not to mention much improved junior quarterback Wyatt Lallamandier. Last year, Wyatt was definitely a run-first kind of quarterback. That has all changed in a year's time, and he can flat out fly outside the pocket, but this year he's added the passing game and and a pretty good collection of receivers to uh, keep the ball spread around quite a bit. You have Rowan Brewer that take turns coming out of the backfield. Reinhardt will step out of the backfield. I mean, we could go on and on. Skyler Ring we'll see a couple of times tonight step out there for Potosi. Uh, I talked to Coach Casey, and he's going to have Jordan Huerta as his starting quarterback this evening. But he said, I don't know if that's going to stick. So he wouldn't tell me much more than that. I asked uh, both coaches, what do you have in the bag of tricks tonight? And you can imagine uh, I didn't get too much, but I... I was given just enough to let us know that we might see some things if uh, St. Genevieve gets in a pre uh, predicament that they do not expect and have to trail in this game at some point in time by a, a wide margin. Uh, Coach White definitely has some things up his sleeve, not to mention when you talk about Coach Bob Weiler, the offensive coordinator for ages now for the St. Genevieve Dragons. Uh, this is going to be his final year. He definitely doesn't want to go out uh, without being a district champion. And on the flip side of that for Potosi, uh, several of those guys back healthy with uh, Kyle Allison, Tristan Brown, Zach Price, Jordan Huerta, Chandler Franklin. Uh, it should be a pretty competitive matchup with a healthy Potosi Trojan squad and this well-oiled machine that is the St. Genevieve Dragons. So a couple of uh, interesting Notes throughout the year between these two teams. St. Genevieve has scored 42.8 points per game. Their lowest scoring effort this year came in the Valley Catholic loss. They were held to 22 points. But uh, on the flip side of that, they've only allowed 17 points per game this season. And that includes a 51-22 loss to Valley Catholic. So you take that out of there. And this St. Genevieve Dragon defense has been the real deal this season. Potosi, no slouch on the defensive side. However, the offense has not matched the defensive output for Potosi so far this season. 
The Trojans have scored 16.4 points per game and have allowed 22.3 points per game this season. You see the two teams at midfield as we are on Web TV this evening. That's J98 Web TV at MimoInfo.com. And our game this evening brought to you by Marzuko Electric in St. Genevieve and St. Genevieve Care Center. So we're at St. Genevieve High School. It's the Dragons' home field, so they'll be wearing the green home jerseys, the white pants, white lettering, and white helmets with the green accents. Have the SG logo on the side. The Potosi Trojans, the visitors this evening, wearing their purple pants and the yellow trim, the yellow helmets with a purple stripe. The jerseys are white, yellow numbering, and purple trim. So uh, I did a little digging, and I have to give all the credit to the Potosi High School website for uh, the series record between these two teams and it's been pretty one-sided in the Dragons favor St. Genevieve leads this all-time series 37 10 and 1 so it's been a, a pretty one-sided all-time series can Potosi shock the Dragons tonight it's definitely not out of the cards as we open the contest the St. Genevieve Dragons will be receiving the football to get this game going the Potosi Trojans as I described the action this evening I'll have the call tonight for you I'm Greg Armbruster it's Jack Sadler behind the lens tonight and as you see on web TV and hear the action this evening the Trojans will kick from right to left and St. Genevieve will be working from left to right and that's coming from the visitors press box at St. Genevieve High School if you're thinking that's a little bit reversed from what you might see it's Kyle Oja set to kick off from the 40-yard line for the Potosi Trojans. Kyle Oja, a pretty strong leg, more of a line drive kicker. We'll see uh, if they're going to try to go ahead and get it to a return man or see if he can kick this one out of the end zone and take the special teams unit away to start this contest. Here we go. We are underway. and It's going to be an onside kick right from the jump. It takes a big hop, and the Trojans have recovered it. Just like that, Coach Casey dives into the bag of tricks, goes with the onside kick, and here the Trojans are starting the first drive of the night in Dragon territory. I think that shocked everybody with Potosi coming out with the onside kick. Hey, sometimes you got to risk it, and Potosi's coming out, and they're going to pull out all the stops. Coach Casey has said leading up to this game, Potosi has absolutely nothing to lose, and they're coming out like that so far, and the team uh, pretty fired up after re recovering the onside kick. So here come the Trojans for the first time tonight. It'll be Jordan Huerta going under center. This drive's going to start on the St. Genevieve 46-yard line. Split backs behind Jordan Huerta. He takes the snap. They're going to hand it off and go around the right side. A good push up front, and it's going to turn to a rugby scrum before the play is finally blown dead. And it's going to be a five-yard gain on the first carry of the night, I believe that that was Chandler Franklin getting the touch. Oh, that was definitely Kyle Allison. We'll see Kyle Allison quite a bit tonight. Usually the featured back went healthy for the Potosi Trojans. We'll see Kyle Allison and Tristan Brown come out of the backfield. Maybe a dose of Zach Price every now and again. Huerta's going to go back under center. Again, split backs behind him. Second and five. Here's the pitch coming to the near side. A jump cut back inside, and they're going to pick up enough to get the first down before the play is blown dead. Just a yard beyond the marker. Another good pickup for the Potosi Trojans going right up the middle. That was a nice cut by Kyle Allison to pick up six. He needed five. Allison looked like he was going to go on the outside of the left tackle. Saw that there was nothing there. Made the jump cut to go back inside and picked up the chains. And it's first and ten from the 35 for Potosi. Already a minute gone in the first quarter. Huerta goes back under center, split backs behind him. They're going to fake the handoff. No, they're going to go ahead and pound it right up the middle, and it's Zach Price running like a Mack truck right up the middle and picking up a big chunk of yards that time for the Potosi Trojans. That's going to move the sticks again. Zach Price, an aggressive, an extremely aggressive runner. When he gets up in between the tackles, he's going to be a hard guy to bring down. So it's a 12-yard pickup for Zach Price. And the Potosi Trojans have another first down. It's first and 10 from the 23-yard line. Potosi coming out like they're on fire so far. Where to go back under center again, split backs behind him. It's Tristan Brown on the wing on the far side. Here's the snap, the pitch. It's to Zach Price. He has the jump cut, and it's hard to get any uh, 
any space in that backfield when they get a push like that up front by the St. Genevieve Dragons. Their front seven is the real deal. And they're not too bad in the secondary either, but maybe the best linebacking and defensive line combination that we see comes right here on the St. Genevieve Dragons. Between Gons and Dowdy, you have Reinhardt out there. There's so many names that you could go through for St. Genevieve and just pretty much all studs across their front seven. It goes down as a two-yard loss for Zach Price. Rings up second and 12 from the 25. Ten minutes to go in the first quarter. Huerta will go back under center, split backs behind him. They're going to hand it off. It's going to go right up the middle. Not much there. Another great push up front by the St. Genevieve Dragons. They're going to get back to about the original line of scrimmage at best. Again, the two-headed monster coming out of the backfield for the Potosi Trojans. Between Kyle Allison and Zach Price, we'll see a little dose of Tristan Brown throughout the evening as well. He'll uh, come around on sweeps more often than not. So third and 12 from the 25, where to will go back under center. Brown comes to the near side on the wing. It's Allison and Price from near side to far side, split behind Huerta. They fake the handoff to Price. Huerta hands it off to Allison, who goes around the outside edge and gets a decent pickup. He'll be well short of the first down. But a nice pickup for the Potosi Trojans on third down. Not enough to move the chains. So what now for Potosi after the six-yard pickup by Kyle Allison? A great fake from Huerta to freeze the Dragon defense. And it looks like they actually might line up and try a field goal here. So it looks like the kick will come from the 25 yard line. That'll make it a 35 yard field goal. Here is the snap, the hold, the kick is away. It's a low line drive. It's up and through the Potosi Trojans. Cover the onside kick, they take it down, they get at least three points out of it so they don't come up empty. And just like that, the Trojans have a 3-0 lead. We'll have a kickoff coming up in 30 seconds on Web TV. Hi, neighbor. The new landscaping around your yard looks great. Oh, thanks. We're doing home improvements. Doing it all with Potosi Lumber. Really? We're replacing cabinets, new carpet, new storm doors, and customized replacement windows. And that's just to start. It's time for Home Improvements. See Potosi Lumber, Highway 21 in Potosi. It was a quick drive after recovering the onside kick for the Potosi Trojans to drive down. They ended up uh, going with a field goal after being shut down. Deep in Dragon territory, the field goal went up and through. Kyle Oja puts three on the board, and the Trojans have a early 3-0 lead set to kick off. I don't think we'll see an onside kick twice. About nine guys across the 50, and this one's going to go deep. Kyle Oja kicking away, and it bounces. Hits off of a Dragon. Did he touch it? He's going to have to field it at the one. Reversing, coming back upfield, and brought down at the seven-yard line. The Potosi Trojans... And all accounts right now are controlling the pace of this football game. A hop right there on the kick as pretty much nine St. Genevieve Dragons were up at the 50 expecting an onside kick again possibly. The kick went over the top, hit the return man, had to bounce back and field it at the one and actually retreated back into the end zone before heading upfield but stopped inside the 10. First and 10 from the nine for St. Genevieve. The Dragons going big on their very first formation of the night. Lala Madeer is going to hand it off and try to go up the middle. Not much there. The Potosi front matching the effort of the Dragon front and keeping that to a very short gain. It looks like after the spot, they're going to put it right back on the nine. And they're actually going to back it up just a little bit, not even a half yard. We'll call it second and a long 10. Wallow and Deer will go back under center for the St. Genevieve Dragons with Rowe and Brewer in the backfield split. It's a tight formation backed up on the nine. And a flag. It looked like early movement from Logan Reinhardt lined up on the outside edge, and that's going to back the Dragons up. It was second and 11 from the eight and a half. 
Now they're going to back up a great deal. It's going to be a tough, tough go for the St. Genevieve Dragons. Looking at second and 15 from their own four-yard line. And for Potosi, this is exactly what you needed. Come out and put it on them early and off it. So now Lalamandir is lined up under center. Rowe Ro and Brewer are essentially on the goal line. So it's looking like Lalamandir is going to air it out. And well beyond the intended receiver, trying to roll back in just a five-step quick drop and get rid of it. Looking to throw it downfield to Blake Moore. That falls incomplete. So now third and 15 from their own four-yard line. Tough sledding for St. Genevieve so far. A lot of football left, 7.34 to go in the first quarter. The Dragons will be facing a third and 15 from their own four-yard line. So special teams getting it done early for the Potosi Trojans with the field goal, the onside recovery, and then getting a little bit of luck on the kickoff. Lalamandir back under center. Rowe and Brewer in the backfield. They're going to fake the handoff. Lalamandir rolling to the far side. Throws over the top and hits off the hands of the intended receiver and falls to the turf. Looking for Dalton Giesler that time. So here's fourth down coming up for the St. Genevieve Dragons. Just like that, Potosi says, don't count us out. Five and five versus nine and one. Forget about all of that in the district playoffs. So that'll bring out the punt team. 7.28 to go in the first quarter. Lalamandir looks like he's back to kick this one and about a step away from being out of bounds. Here's the snap. It gets the Lalamandir cleanly. He gets the kick away. It's going to bounce all the way back into Trojan territory and it will be down at the 47. So a great defensive stance right there for the Potosi Trojans after kicking the onside kick and recovering to open the game. You drive down, you get a field goal. The next kickoff, the Dragons anticipate an onside kick. You pop it over the top, a chip shot. It bounces off of a return man. You pin the Dragons deep. Then you back them up either, even further, a penalty to help you out even a little bit more. Now here you are starting your second offensive possession with great starting field position. It'll be first and 10 from the Trojan 47 with 7.15 to go, and Potosi up 3-0. Huerta back under center. They fake the pitch. No, he's going to go ahead and give it to Price. He saw he was in trouble, and Price is going to be mauled. All green jerseys coming through that gap, and nowhere to go that time for Zach Price. Price had no room to do anything, couldn't jump cut. I don't think that play was even designed for Zach Price, but just how quick it broke down, I think Huerta just had to pull the trigger and give it to the up back, Price. Price loses a yard on that one. That's back-to-back -back touches for Zach Price that have gone backwards after a 12-yard carry on his first touch. He had a minus two, and that was a minus one, so it's second and 11 from the Trojan 46. Huerta goes under center, split backs behind him. Tristan Brown on the far side is the wing. They're going to pitch it to Zach Price, and he shakes one tackle. Should have been a tackle for a loss. He's going to be met. It was just enough to slow him down and let the rest of the Dragon defense close in on him, and they were all over that one. I mean, three different guys for St. Genevieve got in the backfield in a hurry, led by A.J. Gons, and finished off by Austin Brewer. A penalty at the end of it, a chop block against the Potosi Trojans. So that's definitely not going to help their cause after a great start to this game. The flag was thrown from the back judge, so he had to clean look at it for sure. For Potosi, they're waiting your great starting field position after starting on your own 47. You're now backed up to your own 36. So it's second and 21 for the Potosi Trojans. A long way to go. Now they finally wind the clock, 22 on the play clock as the Trojans come up to the line of scrimmage. Huerta headed back under center. Split backs behind him. The handoff is to Price. Price trying to go up the middle, and there's just no room up the middle. There was on the first touch for Zach Price. Since then, there... There are no holes across that drag in front seven. When you have Logan Dowdy as one of your uh, anchors on your defense, it's pretty tough to shake tackles from the drag in front seven. A one-yard gain to Zach Price brings up third down and 20 from the Potosi Trojan 37-yard line. 
Potosi's offense moved well on the first drive. They're moving backwards on this drive. Franklin's going to spread out wide right. Huerta will go back under center. Split backs behind Huerta. They fake the handoff, looking to throw downfield. Here comes pressure. Huerta has nowhere to go and has to just throw it. Coming back to the ball was Chandler Franklin. He was met at the ball by the St. Genevieve corner, Gabe Griminger. Griminger looked like he may have been a little bit early, may have been right on time. It was so close, just a bang-bang call. And it's going to go down as an incompletion. I mean, Jordan Huerta had to run around forever back there just to avoid the sack. He ran to the near side. No receivers downfield on the near side. And when it all is said and done, it's going to result in a penalty. And about the only way that you can have that much time back there under that much duress. So for the Trojans, the special teams unit will have to come back out after a pretty lackluster offensive performance on possession number two. So the Trojans will have to kick this one away. The punter is set on his own 20-yard line for St. Genevieve, the return man on the 30. Clean snap. The kick barely gets away. It's end over end. It's going to bounce at the 35 and take a Trojan hop and stall out at about the 20-yard line. That's exactly where it's going to stall out. So after driving down on the first drive and getting a field goal up and through, the Trojans come up empty on their second possession, forced to punt, but they still hold a 3-0 lead. So now we'll get a look at the Dragon offense for the second time tonight, and they were pretty lackluster on their first possession. They moved backwards and really uh, – didn't have much room to move backwards starting that first drive on their own nine-yard line. So a little bit more breathing room to come out on this drive. It's first and 10 from the 20-yard line. For the St. Genevieve Dragon offense, Lala Madeer will go under center with Rowe and Brewer in the backfield. Potosi looks like they're going to blitz. Here they're sending everybody, and the run comes up the middle. A good run that time when you see the blitz coming through like that. If you take it right up the middle, you can usually get something out of it. And Anthony Rowe picks up a couple going right up the middle. The Potosi edge rush got in the backfield pretty quickly, but unfortunately by the time they got there, Rowe was already marching his way upfield for a six-yard gain. Second and four from the 26 for the Dragons. The Trojans lead this one 3-0. Lala and Deer will go back under center. Rowe and Brewer split back behind him. The handoff is faked, and they're going to give it to the second man up, but he's brought down right as he tries to cross the line of scrimmage. It's Austin Brewer. That'll bring up third down for St. Genevieve. No gain on the carry, so it'll be third and four from the 26. The Trojans can come up with a stop here. That'd be pretty big for momentum on their side. St. Jen, four yards. You've got two of the better running backs. I think I can tell you what we might see here. Lalamadeer back under center, split backs. Rowe and Brewer behind him. They're going to hand it off right up the middle. And it was Brewer carrying it, getting right to the line, the first down line. But did he get it? I think he needed four. And they're going to go ahead and say that he got it. So give four to Brewer. And the first down to the Dragons. That'll make it first and 10 from the 30. 4.05 to go in the first quarter. Lala Madeer set to go back under center with Rowe and Brewer split back behind him. Reinhardt spread up to the far side, and he's going to get caught again for a false start. The hard count for Wyatt Lollamandeer, I've seen it work time and time again this season. Unfortunately, it worked right there, but it was his teammate that started early, and that was the second time this evening we've seen Logan Reinhardt start early. That'll back the Dragons up five, bring up second and 15 from the 25-yard line. Just inside of four minutes to go in the third quarter, 3.52 and counting, 20 on the play clock. The Dragons break the huddle. Rowe and Brewer in the backfield. From near side to far side, Lala Mandir will go back under center. Six across the front for St. Genevieve. The handoff going to go up the middle. It's Brewer. He was into the second layer of the Trojan defense. It seemed like as soon as that play started, a big carry right there for the St. Genevieve Dragons. A big run for Austin Brewer on second and 15. 
about two yards away from the first down marker. A big push up front by St. Genevieve and a 13 yard carry for Brewer. Brings up third and two from the 38. Rowan Brewer in the backfield, split behind Lalamandir who's under center. He takes a snap, pitches to Brewer. Brewer gonna cut back inside and not much there, but looks like enough to pick up the first down. He needed two, three at best. So St. Genevieve chipping away on this drive, still in their own territory though. First and 10 from the 41-yard line as the Dragons are trying to drive down the field. It's Rowe and Brewer near side to far side in the backfield. Lalo and Deer set back under center. Big front for the Dragons. A flag comes in right at the snap. So far tonight, that's been against the Dragons. I didn't see anybody move up front for St. Genevieve. And it's going to be Potosi lined up in the neutral zone that time. So that'll shorten things up for St. Genevieve. They'll now have the ball four yards away from midfield at their own 46-yard line. They'll make it five yards away from the sticks. First and five from the 46. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys across the front for St. Genevieve. Split backs behind Lalam and Deer. They're going to hand it off to Rowe that time. He's going to met, be met right at the line of scrimmage. Push forward for maybe a yard. We'll see where they give him the spot. That looks like they were spotted about a half yard forward. We'll call it one. Second and a short five. Ball spotted on the 47 yard line in Dragon territory. Rowan Brewer in the backfield, near side to far side. Lala Madeer back under center. He takes the snap. They're gonna hand it off going up the middle once again is Austin Brewer. Austin Brewer pushes into St. Genevieve territory. And is gonna be brought down just short of the 45. They'll spot it just in between the 46 and 45. A seven yard pickup for Brewer, his sixth carry of the night. Getting a bulk of the work so far, six touches for Brewer and two for Rowe. Same formation, split backs behind Lalamandir. He takes the snap, coming to the near side, they're gonna hand it off and shaking one tackler and staying on his feet. Getting a decent push up front again is the St. Genevieve offensive line, creating a good gap there for Anthony Rowe to push through. Rowe picks up four. Brings up second and short from the 42. 117. Still to go in the first quarter. The Dragons looking to find the end zone for the first time tonight. 3 to 0 Trojan lead. Lalamadeer set and ready under center. Split backs behind him. They're going to go to the up back. That's Brewer. Brewer breaks one tackle, comes out of a cloud of dust, and gets up to the first down marker. And it looks like he picked up enough. He needed six. Uh, it looked like he picked up seven on that one. Austin Brewer up the middle. Been a tough guy to bring down for the Trojans so far. But Potosi clings to a 3-0 to zero lead. It is enough for a first down. The first and 10 from the 35-yard line. Lalamandir steps back under center. Reinhardt spread out left with Rowe and Brewer split in the backfield. Here's the snap, the handoff going back up the middle again, and Trojans ready for it on that one. Austin Brewer met right at the line of scrimmage and wrestled down to the turf. Inside of one minute to go in the first quarter. No gain. On the play, stay spotted at the 35, second and 10. Lollamandir, the junior quarterback, set to go back under center with his two senior running backs behind him. They're going to pitch to Rowe, go around the left side. Rowe shakes one tackler, stays on his feet, makes another man miss, cuts back to the left side, and see you later. The Dragons are in the end zone with 12 seconds to go in the first quarter. Anthony Rowe breaks four tackles and marches his way 35 yards to give the Dragons a 6-3 to three lead with just a few seconds to go in our opening quarter. A great run from 
Anthony Rowe after being held to a couple of short carries. He goes 35 yards to the end zone and St. Genevieve grabs the lead. Special teams unit will come on and see if they can send one through the uprights and make this a 7-3 St. Genevieve lead. Couple of broken tackles, a great run there by Anthony Rowe and that's something I thought that Potosi needed to do well from start to finish of this game was tackle. There's the snap, the hold, the kick, it's up and it's through. And it's 7-3, St. Genevieve with 13 seconds to go in the first quarter. A 35-yard touchdown run from Anthony Rowe gives the Dragons their first lead of the night. We'll step aside for 30 seconds and bring the kickoff up next on Web TV. Do you want to buy a home or car? Need to spruce up your kitchen or bathroom? Or maybe you want to start a business, consolidate debt, or go on vacation? Whatever the case, Bloomsdale Bank has a variety of real estate, consumer, and commercial loans. So when you need a home equity line of credit, a fixed rate mortgage, a new or used auto loan, or a commercial loan, contact a loan officer at Bloomsdale Bank or apply online at bloomsdalebank.com. Bloomsdale Bank, connected to our customers since 1914. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. We are back after a 35-yard touchdown run for the St. Genevieve Dragons. It was Anthony Rowe breaking several tackles, running to the left side and finding the end zone. The extra point went up and through, and St. Genevieve takes their first lead of the night with 13 seconds to go in our opening quarter of play. Now the Dragons will kick off to the Trojans. This one's going to bounce at the 20 and be fielded and brought back upfield. Nowhere to go. And going to be wrestled down. At the 25, and a flag comes out at the end of that. Eight seconds now on the first quarter clock. And St. Genevieve takes their first lead of the night at 7-3 after that big run from Anthony Rowe. And our scoring drives of the game are brought to you by Auto Plaza Ford, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram of DeSoto and Fredericktown. If you're in the market for a new or pre-owned vehicle, check on inventory and prices at autoplazaford.com. So the Trojans with eight seconds to go in the first quarter. Maybe we'll see them run a play before the end of this quarter. A pretty low scoring first quarter from what I had anticipated coming into tonight's contest. So after the penalty on the return, the Trojans start on their own 40 yard line. They'll have a first and 10 from the 40. Huerta will go under center, split backs behind him. Brown on the wing, they're gonna hand it off, go right up the middle, it's Zach Price. Price picks up a yard before being brought down, and that will bring an end to the first quarter of play. It is 7-3. St. Genevieve leads the Potosi Trojans in round two of district play. We'll step aside for one minute, switch sides, and bring it right back to you for J98 Web TV at MimoInfo.com. Jimmy John's America's number one sandwich delivery, home of subs so fast you'll freak, including subs, slims, and giant clubs. Proudly preparing a plethora of palate-pleasing products using fresh meats, fresh veggies, and fresh baked bread. Served here in the store, delivered freaky fast to your domicile. And don't forget our world-famous Jimmy Chips and Jimmy Cookies on our fabulous catering services, featuring box lunches, 15- and 30-piece party platters, and two, four, and six-foot subs. This is Ed. How may I help you? Wow, that sounds good. I'll have that. You'll have what, ma'am? What you just said? I'm on my way. Jimmy John's, located on Maple Street in Farmington, delivers seven days a week. Call 756-FAST. That's 756-F-A-S-T. <laughs> It is a 7-3 ball game from St. Genevieve High School this evening in round two of district football action. The Dragons scoring with 13 seconds to go in the opening quarter on a 35-yard run by Anthony Rowe. The Trojans had to kick a 35-yard field goal on their first drive of the game. We're going to switch sides, so now the Trojans will work from left to right as we go through the second quarter of play. It's... Spotted currently about on the 41-yard line. It's second down and nine for Potosi. Huerta goes under center, split backs behind him. Brown on the wing. They hand it off going right up the middle of Zach Price and nowhere to go. Price shakes his first tackler and just runs right into more St. Genevieve Dragons. And Zach Price driven backwards. We'll see where they actually spot this and see if they give him forward progress. No, they're just going to say uh, right back where it was. No gain on the play, so it'll bring up third and ten. As Zach Price is shut down at the line of scrimmage. Price having a tough go. 
after his first carry went for 12 yards. He's at negative two, negative one, a one-yard carry, and that one for no gain. So third down and 10 for the Potosi Trojans. Huerta will go under center with Brown as the wing. Price and Allison split in the backfield. Coming around to the near side, Huerta looking to throw it downfield. He has to jump, make one man miss, and he gets the ball away. It's gonna be caught for a first down to Chandler Franklin. Franklin catches it at the 43, a 23 yard pitch and catch from Huerta to Chandler Franklin. This is the second pass attempt so far for Jordan Huerta. That one goes for 23 yards and a first down. And that moves Potosi into St. Genevieve territory. Now first and 10 from the Dragon 43 yard line. Potosi still in the huddle, 14 on the play clock. They break out. Huerta will go back under center. Franklin lines up on the near side as the wing with Price and Allison in the backfield. Huerta pulls it out of Price. He's gonna keep it himself and pick up a decent chunk before being brought down. About three yards away from the first down marker. So Jordan Huerta calls his own number for the first time tonight. Jordan Huerta has the tendency to call his own number a few times throughout a game. That one goes for seven. He comes into tonight's contest with 211 rushing yards and three touchdowns. Averages 3.1 yards per carry. So he doubled that on that one. It brings up second and three from the St. Genevieve 36. It's Allison and Price in the backfield split. Huerta back under center. And they're going to hand it off to Price. He's going to go back up the middle. And there's just no room up the middle against this St. Genevieve defense. I don't even think he got a yard. We'll see where they actually give him the spot. So we'll bring up third and very manageable for Potosi. A one-yard pickup for Zach Price who has had now five carries in a row go for one yard or less. And by less, I mean half of those have gone backwards. 9.30 to go in the second quarter. Here's a third and two for the Potosi Trojans from the Dragon 35. Huerta under center, split backs behind him are Allison and Price. They're gonna hand it off to Allison. Lead blocking is Price. They're gonna pick up the first down and keep their drive alive. The Trojan run game doing just enough on this drive. Can they keep that going and sustain this momentum and get into the end zone? This ball spotted on the 28. It's a seven yard pickup for Kyle Allison. Had Zach Price out front lead blocking and that was pretty effective. So first and 10 now from the 28. 9.05 to go in the second quarter. A very low scoring game at 7-3 St. Genevieve. Potosi looking to rally and get back into the end zone. Huerta takes the snap. They hand it off going right up the middle. And that's about the most success we've seen them have up the middle on this drive. That one was to Kyle Allison. Allison picks up a couple. Brings us inside of nine minutes to go. In the first half. Second and six. After a four-yard pickup for Potosi, going to Kyle Allison again. The Trojans taking a little bit of time. I, I like what I'm seeing here out of Potosi, trying to keep the ball out of the Dragons' hands. And doing pretty well on this drive. Second and six is Huerta goes under center. Split backs behind him, handed it off up to the middle. And again, going to Kyle Allison, trying to pick up the short yardage and keep this drive alive. It's going to be close to the marker, but a little bit short. Just a couple yards short. It's like about two and a half yards. We'll call it a three yard pickup. Again, Kyle Allison is sixth carry of the evening. Split evenly so far between Allison and Price. Third and three from the Dragon 21. Another big third down for the Trojan offense. Allison, Price in the backfield. Franklin, wide right. The handoff going right up the middle and a big push and sitting on a defender was Kyle Allison, so the play was still live. I think he's gonna be short of the marker. It's gonna be fourth and very, very short. A yard and a half at best after a one yard pickup. Kyle Allison went up the middle and when he was pushed back, actually sat down on a St. Genevieve defender. So he was still live and had the presence of mind to reach forward and try to pick up what he could. 
and did just enough to pick up a yard. Unfortunately, he needed three to move the sticks. It looks like Coach Casey's going to leave the offense on the field. Fourth and two, seven minutes to go in the second quarter. Where to under center, split backs are Allison and Price. They pitch it to Price. He's got to pick it up. He turns the corner, and he's going to pick it up, and then some get inside the Dragon 10. A good pick up that time for the Potosi Trojans. They needed the 18 for the first down. Ended up getting down to the nine. So Zach Price muscling his way to the first down. An 11-yard pickup. Takes the Dragons down to the nine-yard line with a fresh set of downs. Well, it's first and goal to go from the nine. The Trojans trying to regain the lead. 15 now on the play clock as the Trojans break the huddle. Chandler Franklin to the wide side is the wing. Huerta will go back under center with Price and Allison split behind him. The handoff is going to be pulled out, and Huerta is going to keep it himself and try to jump inside the left tackle. He's going to pick up a couple. Like a three-yard pickup for Jordan Huerta. Right on, poor, right on par for his yards per carry. 3.1 coming into tonight. Kyle Allison has the... Well, I should say Tristan Brown has the largest yards per carry at 7.2. We have not seen him this evening. Kyle Allison comes in at 4.5 per touch. Now second and seven from the seven. Seven to three, St. Genevieve. Potosi on the doorstep of regaining the lead or at least having the opportunity to make it a one-point game. Looks like we're not even going to see a play this time. We're going to see the Trojans call a timeout with 5.58 to go in the first half. It's a 7-3 St. Genevieve Dragon lead, but when we come back, it's going to be second and seven from the seven for the Potosi Trojans. Can they get into the end zone? We'll find out in 30 seconds on Web TV. There's no place like home, but when age or illness turns home from a place of happiness into one of loneliness, it may be time to consider a health care facility. Whether your need is short-term rehabilitation or long-term care, St. Genevieve Care Center offers high-quality medical care complemented by a dedicated staff who offer warmth, wisdom, and the experience of caring, which makes their facility the next best thing to being home. Dignity, respect, care. St. Genevieve Care Center, 1010 St. Gen Drive in St. Genevieve. Medicaid, Medicare, private pay, private insurance, and hospice accept. 5.58 to go in the first half from St. Genevieve High School tonight in round two of district play. And now the Dragons currently lead this one 7-3, but the Potosi Trojans have a second and goal to go from the seven-yard line trying to regain the lead. Can they do so? The offense has moved quite well through the run game so far. I had to pick up... A first down through the air on this drive. Will they go back to the air? Doesn't look like it here. A big front there for Potosi. Split backs behind Huerta. He's going to pull it out and throw it over the top. Can he get it there? And just a little bit too far out in front of the intended receiver, Chandler Franklin. But Franklin had his man beat. Huerta just unable to get it to him. That'll make it third and seven, 552. The clock stops after the incompletion. So that's definitely not what I was expecting. So that's uh, what came from the timeout called by Coach Mark Casey of the Potosi Trojans. You don't see on tape too many times this year where Potosi comes in passing. Jordan Huerta came into this game with 61 attempts all season long after taking over in week five. Huerta will go back under center, split backs behind him. Franklin on the outside of the formation. And it looks like a little bit of a fake. They made a few people on the St. Genevieve front seven bite on the fake but definitely not enough they're going to be kept out of the end zone that'll bring up fourth down for Potosi the ball spotted at the seven yard line so no gain there trying to take it up the middle once again St. Genevieve has been pretty tough up front and that brings out Kyle Ogia again Kyle Ogia's first field goal was from 35 this time the holder is going to set up on the 14. So a much easier kick, but snap and a hold. And it looks like they're going to call delay a game on the Potosi Trojans. So rather than kicking it from the 14, they're going to back him up and kick it from the 19. That's roughly 
the same range that the first field goal was made from, but it was on the opposite end of the field. A little back up five yards, and Oja will get the chance to send another one through the uprights and make this a one-point game. The snap, the hold is good. The kick is away, it's hooking, and it's up and through. Another made field goal by the Potosi Trojans, and it cuts it down to a one-point game at 7-6 to six with 4.59 to go in the first half of play. We've got a one-point game. St. Genevieve will receive the kickoff in 30 seconds on Web TV. If you're thinking about building, remodeling, or have any project in your future, stop by County Do-It Center in St. Genevieve and Bloomsdale. You'll find everything needed for the do-it-yourselfer or professional contractor. Check out the Do-It Best Quality Paint Line, one of the fastest-growing private brands in the industry. The best-look self-priming interior or exterior paints comes with a lifetime warranty, so you know they'll stand the test of time. At County Do-It Center, they have what you need in lumber, hardware, and Do-It Best Quality Paint. County Do-It Center is a proud sponsor of High School Athletics. Another made field goal by the Potosi Trojans cuts this to a one-point game at 7-6 in favor of the Dragons. The St. Genevieve defense doing a great job so far tonight from keeping the Trojans out of the end zone. It was an almost touchdown for Potosi with a pass bouncing off the hands of Chandler Franklin, maybe thrown a little bit too far into the back corner. They had to settle for the field goal that went up and through. That brings us to 7-6. The Trojans... Kicking off once again to St. Genevieve. This one's going to bounce at the 10 and go right into the end zone. So the Dragons will bring the ball out to the 20-yard line. And with 4.59 to go in the first half, the Dragons have plenty of time to drive down the field for Potosi. If you can come up with a stop here and run this into halftime, you're going to open up the third quarter with the football after recovering that onside kick to open this game. But I imagine St. Genevieve is probably thinking about that onside kick to open up the third quarter as well. It'll be first and 10 from the Dragon 20 as the St. Genevieve offense comes back out on the field. Lalamandir goes under center. He turns and pitches it right to Rowe. Rowe has to come to the near side, shakes off one tackler, stays spinning, and able to pick up a couple of more. Anthony Rowe and Austin Brewer, very difficult to bring down. And you get a little example of that right there. The clock continues to run, so St. Genevieve, I'm sure, in 80 yards can manage four and a half minutes. It was a five-yard pickup by Rowe that makes it second and five from the 25. Lala Madeira will go back under center with split backs behind him. There's the snap, handing it off quickly, going up the middle once again to Anthony Rowe. Rowe will be short of the first down marker but cut that distance in half. And it'll be second and a short three. Short three, long two, however you want to look at it. It's third down. Three yards to go to the sticks. Lalamandir back under center. Rowe and Brewer split behind him. The snap, they're going to hand it off after a delay to Brewer, who's going to go to the right. And Brewer is going to be stood up. He'll be two yards short of the first down marker. So a one-yard carry for Austin Brewer brings up fourth and two from the 28. And I would say that it's the special teams unit on the field, but a lot of the personnel is the same, so you never know what you might see. And it is going to be a fake. They're going to come up throwing, and it hits off the hands of the intended receiver, and it's a turnover on downs from the 28. That is massive for Potosi with 3.23 to go. St. Genevieve goes for a fake punt. And it was almost like you could read it all the way. And now the Trojans are going to have their best starting field position of the evening. An interesting call there. It would have been brilliant had the uh, pass been caught. But it was not, and now the Trojans, with a one-point deficit, are starting on the Dragon 28. And the snap is dropped. Flags come in from everywhere. The back judge is pointing St. Jen football, and just like that, it doesn't matter. What a weird turn of events. After the fake punt doesn't work out, and St. Jen turns it over on downs, the snap exchange is dropped to the turf, and the Dragon offense is right back out on the field. 
What a turn of events right there. Soon as the fake punt happens, they turn it over, and now St. Genevieve breathes a new life here in the first half with 319 still to go. First and 10 from the 29. After the fastest possession change you might ever see, Lalamadir goes under center with split backs behind him. Brewer and Rowe. Lalamadir looking to throw it downfield. It's a one on one matchup. Can he get it to the intended receiver? And about five yards out in front of Logan Reinhardt. Had that been on the money and Reinhardt could have caught that in stride, he would still be running. But that'll freeze the clock at 313 and bring up second and 10 from the Dragon 29 yard line. A 7 6 lead for St. Gent. And looking to extend that after taking the ball out of the hands of the Trojans in a very strange set of events. Lalamadir on the second and ten. Split backs behind him. He's going to hand it off. And Austin Brewer's coming to the edge. He's got Chandler Franklin out in front of him, slowing him down. It lets the rest of the Potosi defense come and collapse after the 21-yard pickup by Austin Brewer. Already ten carries for Brewer in this game. Ten for Brewer, six for Rowe. That makes it first and 10 from the 50. 3.04 to go in the first half. Reinhardt spread out to the right. Giesler is the tight end on the near side. Lalamandir with split backs behind him, back under center, handing it off to the up back. No, he pulls it out at the last second and tries to go around the outside himself, but only picks up a yard. Lalamandir's first carry. Just a one yard gain, brings up second and nine. The clock will continue to run inside of three minutes to play. Now the play clock starts to wind. St. Genevieve already out of the huddle. Lalamandir set and ready with Brewer and Rowe from near to far in the backfield. Reinhardt spread right. Second and nine from the 49. Lalamandir takes the snap, handing it off to the up back this time. Pushing through, it's Austin Brewer. And it turns into a rugby scrum for about five. Austin Brewer getting a lot of action so far tonight. And that was his 11th carry so far. And that one goes for five yards. Brings up third and four from the Trojan 44. Again, the same formation. Giesler, the near side tight end. Reinhardt spread out white. Rowe and Brewer in the backfield. The pitch is to Rowe. He's coming to the near side. Makes one man miss. Stays on his feet. Tiptoeing down the sideline. Cuts back inside. Anthony Rowe scampering into the end zone. One man to beat. Tackled from behind and into the end zone. Another monster run for Rowe. This time from 44 yards out. And Anthony Rowe running with a purpose tonight his second touchdown of the first half and that makes it 13-6 for St. Genevieve that's a 44 yard touchdown run his first a 35 yard touchdown run to put St. Genevieve out front and now that turnover is extremely detrimental for the Potosi Trojans after you could have started on the Dragon 28, you turn it over. They march down the field and get into the end zone. Here's the extra point, the snap, the hold, the kick. It's up, and it is through. And the Dragons now lead 14-6 to over the Potosi Trojans with 1 minute 50 seconds to go in the first half. We'll have a kickoff in 30 seconds on Web TV. Are you in need of an appliance? Marzuko Electric, Best Brands Plus in St. Genevieve and Perryville is your home of GE, Whirlpool, Maytag, KitchenAid, Frigidaire, and more. In all, Marzuko Electric carries over 12 lines of appliances, electronics, satellites, and TVs. They also offer factory-authorized appliance service as well as residential, commercial, or industrial electrical service. For all your appliance needs or for professional electrical service, visit Marzuko Electric, 425 Market Street in St. Genevieve or Crossroads Village Center in Perryville. It's now 14-6 after a 44-yard touchdown run by Anthony Rowe. Our scoring drives of the game brought to you by Auto Plaza Ford, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. Find more at AutoPlazaFord.com. Three back to return this for Potosi. A definitely uh, an odd special teams formation. The kick is up, and it is away. It's going to bounce at the 24, be fielded at the 20, coming right up the middle, going airborne. The ball pops out at the end, and St. Genevieve comes up with another Potosi Trojan turnover. The return man trying to go airborne, and as soon as he did, he was smashed into. The ball came loose, and just like that, the Dragons back-to-back -back turnovers. And they are taking over this football game. It was a turnover 
by Potosi for the first and, 20, first and 10 from the Dragon, 28. St. Jen turned that into points. Now they turn it over on the ensuing kickoff. And they're going to start another drive in their own in Potosi territory. This one on the 31. First and 10 from the 31. 145 to go. And St. Jen leads 14-6. And has plenty of time to add to that. We're going to see a shotgun formation. Three wide right. Brewer in the backfield. Looks like he's going to roll out to block. Lalamadier pumps, throws, and hits off the hands of Anthony Rowe. Rowe was open on the sideline. Just couldn't hang on to that one. And Lalamandir 0 for 4 to start this game. That's very uncharacteristic for Wyatt Lalamandir. But that's the first time tonight we've seen that three wide set from St. Genevieve. They used that in the second half against Potosi, the first meeting, and it worked very well. So now it's three right, one left. Lalamandir and Brewer in the backfield. The shotgun snap is low. Has to toss it up to Brewer, and Brewer goes right up the middle to pick up a couple. A low snap that time to Lalamandir. He had to field it off the hop and just hand it off to Austin Brewer. Brewer picks up three. Brings up third and seven from the 28. Twins left, twins right. Hard count up front, and Potosi tips its hand. Wyatt Lalamandir probably has the best hard count that we see in the area. It worked right there, and it's going to be, again, twins left, twins right. Brewer comes to the left side. He's going to work out front to block. Lalamadier throwing downfield. It hits off the hands of another receiver and dropped. That one was a little bit low, trying to throw to the sideline. And that's five straight incompletions for Wyatt Lalamadier, and that brings up fourth and seven from the Trojan 28-yard line. Just one minute, two seconds to go. Are we going to see... The Dragons go to the end zone. Again, that four wide set with twins left, twins right. The shotgun snap. Lalamadir looking to throw over the middle. Has Reinhardt there, and Reinhardt drops one. Right in the hands. Just couldn't hang on to it. Six straight incompletions now for Wyatt Lalamadir. And the second turnover on downs tonight for St. Genevieve. For the Trojans, you have 59 seconds and a long way to go. You've got 72 yards to cover. After seeing St. Jen go down and add to their lead, now 14-6. Potosi just 59 seconds to work. Huerta's going to go under center, split backs behind him. Again, a tight formation. And they're going to hand it off, going right up the middle. And a good run. It's Kyle Allison getting up to the 39. They're going to spot him at the 40. So a 12-yard pickup for Allison. Come on, boy. And Kyle Allison on, makes a pretty sizable dent in the distance. It's going to be first and 10 from the Dragon 40. So now Potosi. Lined up on the 40 with a first and 10. Where to under center. He pitches to Price. Price has nowhere to go. And he's going to be brought down in the backfield for a loss of one. And brings us to 36 seconds. And a timeout called by the Potosi Trojans. So we'll take one with them. We'll step aside for 30 seconds and bring back the conclusion of the first half with the Dragons leading 14 to 6 on Web TV. <laughs> Hi, neighbor. The new landscaping around your yard looks great. Oh, thanks. We're doing home improvements. Doing it all with Potosi Lumber. Really? We're replacing cabinets, new carpet, new storm doors, and customized replacement windows. And that's just to start. It's time for home improvements. See Potosi Lumber, Highway 21 in Potosi. 36 seconds away from seeing the conclusion of the first half of play from St. Genevieve High School for round two of high school districts. And right now the Dragons hold on to a 14 to six lead. Both touchdowns coming from Anthony Rowe from 35 and 44 yards away. Turnovers proving costly in this first half for Potosi. 36 seconds to play, second and 10 lined up on the Dragon 40. Huerta goes under center, split backs behind him, Franklin on the wing, and looking to throw quickly, and a miscommunication that time. Huerta was looking for the hitch. Franklin was looking for the go route. 
I think Franklin had the right idea, but unfortunately that's going to fall and stop the clock. 33 seconds and third and 10 now for Potosi lined up on the Dragon 40. This will be a, a big set of downs coming up for Tro uh, the Potosi Trojans. They did well managing the clock for about 90% of this first half and turnovers just back to back. Allowed St. Jen to put a gap in the score, but Potosi trying to do something about it. Huerta coming up throwing, the pass was tipped. And they're going to say it was caught after being tipped, but for a very short gain. That was complete to Chandler Franklin. Franklin got maybe a yard. And that's going to bring about another timeout. But we'll go ahead and tell you that we are brought to you tonight by Marzuko Electric in St. Genevieve. St. Genevieve Care Center as well, along with ProCare Automotive of Bonterre, Earth Mother Health Foods, County Do-It Center in St. Genevieve, Crown Collision Center of Farmington, and Fleegs Equipment in St. Genevieve. Currently a 14-6 ball game in favor of the St. Genevieve Dragons. The Trojans, after the two-yard completion, now face fourth down, eight yards yards away from the sticks lined up on the St. Genevieve Dragon 42 and Potosi looked like they were going to have a chance to take a lead in this game but it was seven to six the Trojans had a first and ten from the Dragon 28 and turned it over before they even ran a play as soon as the center quarterback exchange happened the ball was taken right away from the Dragons the following kickoff after the St. Genevieve Dragons scored ended up being fumbled and now here are the Trojans having to punt in the final seconds of the second quarter. It's going to be fielded just short of the 30, returned for about two yards. So Potosi opts to punt at the end of that drive and now 15 seconds away from the end of the second quarter, a 14-6 lead for St. Genevieve. They'll send the offense back out on the field, but will they try to do anything? I don't think you'll try to risk too much here. I don't think Coach Weick has the uh, the reckless mentality to try and air it out here and do something. They went back to the same offensive formation that they started with with that split back with Lalamadeer under center. And they're just going to take a knee and kill out this second quarter clock. So the first half will come to a close at 14 to 6. Both touchdowns in the first half by Anthony Rowe. One from 35, one from 44 and Headed to the break with a lead are the St. Genevieve Dragons on their home field up on the visiting Potosi Trojans, 14-6. St. Genevieve set to kick off to Potosi, but as you can see on your screen, 11 guys on the field for Potosi. 10 of those guys are in between the 50 and the 40. So. I think we're expecting an onside kick. That's how we open the game with Potosi recovering. I don't know if St. Jen will do that here. No, they're going to do a low line drive kick. It's going to bounce and be fielded at the 15. Coming right up the middle. Now trying to shake and find a little bit of space. Crossing the 30, turning an edge and getting up to the 35-yard line. And the Trojans, a great return to get things started. We didn't see that onside kick that we thought we may see. Uh, if you're up 14 to 6, you really don't have to uh, push the issue all that much. So here we go, starting the second half. A 14-6 lead for St. Genevieve, but Potosi will start on their own 36-yard line. Trying to get back into this game. It's not out of the question. The offense moved pretty well so far. Here's Jordan Huerta under center with split backs behind him. And he's going to hand it off to Zach Price, and he is stuck. He looked like he was in quicksand. One defender got into the backfield. I think it was A.J. Gons grabbed a hold of Zach Price. And you would have thought his boot was stuck in mud. Absolutely nowhere to go for Zach Price. And he loses five yards on the first play of the second half for the Potosi Trojans. Pretty sizable loss there in the first offensive play. So Potosi had a field goal, a punt, a field goal, a turnover, a turnover, and a punt through the first half. They need to do a little bit better than that if they want to get back into this one. Huerta goes under center on a second and 15. Split backs behind him. He pulls the fake hand off away and looking to throw it downfield. And it's going to be complete, but they're going to get right back to the original line of scrimmage after the five-yard catch. 
by Chandler Franklin, his third reception of the game. Franklin came in with just 21 receptions all season. Potosi not a very pass-heavy football team. But they complete the first one of the second half. But unfortunately, the five-yard pickup, all that does is makes it third and 10 from the 35-yard line. Six across the front for St. Jen, seven up front. For Potosi, split backs behind Huerta. He takes the handoff, looking to throw deep downfield for Tristan Brown, and it was nearly picked off. The defender was Gabe Griminger back there, 5'7", sophomore for St. Genevieve. Has been pretty uh, solid on the corner position all year and does just enough. Ball underthrown slightly by Jordan Huerta, looking to find Tristan Brown. That's really the first time that we've seen Tristan Brown involved this evening. And now it brings out the punt team. The punter will stand on the 20. And for St. Jen back to field it is Luke Brewster. It's a high punt. It hangs up for quite a while. Field it at the 28. A cut back to the inside. Staying on his feet makes another man miss. And a great return right there for St. Genevieve. Running that one all the way back into Potosi Trojan territory. Luke Brewster comes up with a 21-yard return. And the Dragons will start this drive with fantastic field position right after forcing the Potosi Trojans to punt on their first drive of the second half. So St. Genevieve starting to look a little bit more like St. Genevieve. One of the better teams in the state this year, especially when you talk about Class 3. Been basically state ranked since about week four, week five. Lala Madeer under center. Split backs behind him. They hand it off. It's Brewer. Brewer's going to be tripped up just a couple yards in. A nice tackle up front by Dylan King. A short pickup by Austin Brewer. Just three yards. His 13th carry of the game. It's first of the second half. Makes it second and seven from the Potosi Trojan 46-yard line. This drive started in Potosi territory. Lala Madeer under center. Split backs behind him are Rowe and Brewer. It's Rowe's turn. He's going to come around to the near side before being brought down. Out in front to block that time was Brewer. Brewer was chipped, rerouted him, and that let the linebackers for Potosi close in on Rowe. Just a one-yard pickup. He's got eight for 98 and two touchdowns. Not a bad game so far. Brings up third and six from the Trojan, 45. Both teams keeping it on the ground quite a bit so far. 9.30 still to go in our third quarter. Logan Reinhardt spreads right. Rowan Brewer in the backfield. Lalamandir under center. is going to keep it himself. He gets to the outside edge. He's got one man to beat, but not able to do so. He's going to be brought down after picking up the first down. Chandler Franklin. Able to stay with Lala Madeer and take him out of bounds. That moves the sticks for the Dragons. And the ball is spotted at the 33. So a 12-yard pickup for Lala Madeer on his second touch of the night. So first and 10 from the Trojan 34. The Dragons are driving. Lala Madeer under center. Split backs behind him. That's Rowe going up the middle. Keeping it in between the tackles. And that's going to keep the clock moving. We keep seeing offense like this the rest of the way. It's going to be a quick second half. And that's uh, what Potosi wants to see, but they don't want to see it happen like this. Reinhardt again spreads out right. It's Brewer and Rowe, near side to far side, and into the backfield. Lala Madeer under center. They're going to Brewer. Brewer is going to get a good push after being met right at the line of scrimmage. He's going to fight his way for a couple more yards. And Austin Brewer makes it third and manageable after a short carry. Brewer, 14 carries so far tonight for 59. Makes it third. And a long one from the 25. Lalo and Deer will go back under center. Split backs behind him. Reinhardt, the lone receiver. They're going back up the middle again, and it's Rowe fighting his way for the first down. They'll get the first down and maybe a couple extra, and that will move the chains after a two-yard pickup by Anthony Rowe. And now he's got nine carries for 100 yards. He cracks the century mark with eight minutes to go in the third quarter. 
Wallum in here will go back under center, split backs behind him. Reinhardt spread right, and they're going right back up the middle because it's working. And Anthony Rowe fights his way down to about a yard shy of the first down marker. And that's pretty much what these two guys can do to you. They can just wear you down. And that's exactly what they're doing on this drive. When you rotate between Rower and Brew, two big physical runners, they're going to wear you down pretty quickly. The eight-yard pickup makes it second and two from the 13. In the red zone, the Dragons put the ball into the hands of Austin Brewer on the left side. And Brewer goes right into the pile and pushes forward, gets close to the first down marker. Ball spotted right at the marker. No signal just yet from the official. And they're going to say inches. So inches away. Brings up third down. And about the length of the football from the Trojan 11. Lalamandir under center, split backs behind him. They're going to go to Rowe and let him fight for the one yard. And they do pick up that first down. Anthony Rowe fighting his way forward. And that's going to make it first down and goal to go from the Trojan nine-yard line. So this will be guaranteed if St. Jen gets into the end zone, their shortest scoring play of the evening. 35 and 44 were the touchdown runs in the first half. So it's Rowe and Brewer in the backfield. Reinhardt to the right. They pitch to Brewer to the right side. Can he find his way into the end zone? St. Genevieve scores again. And this time it is Austin Brewer from nine yards away with 6.55 to go in the third quarter. It's now 20 to 6 in favor of the St. Genevieve Dragons. Looking quite well offensively on this Drive, moving it down the field, have no issues. The run game gets it done. And the Dragons extend their lead. Here comes the extra point from Giesler. The snap, the hold, the kick is up and it's away. And it goes up and through. It's now 21 to six after the nine yard touchdown run from Austin Brewer. The Dragons Are starting to pull away. Are you in need of an away. appliance? Marzuko Electric, Best Brands Plus in St. Genevieve and Perryville is your home of GE, Whirlpool, Maytag, KitchenAid, Frigidaire, and more. In all, Marzuko Electric carries over 12 lines of appliances, electronics, satellites, and TVs. They also offer factory authorized appliance service as well as residential, commercial, or industrial electrical service. For all your appliance needs or for professional electrical service, visit Marzuko Electric, 425 Market Street in St. Genevieve or Crossroads Village Center in Perryville. It was a nine-yard touchdown run by Austin Brewer. The extra point from Giesler up and through with no issues, making it 21-6. St. Genevieve starting to pull away. They have not allowed a touchdown so far tonight, just a pair of field goals, one from 35, one from 29. So St. Genevieve's defense doing more than enough so far in the run game, trying to uh, outdo the defense. So here's the kickoff back to Potosi. It's a low liner to the far side of the field, fielded at the 15, trying to reverse, coming to the near side. He's going to shake, and no way you're getting away from that big fellow. The ball pops out at the end, but the play is blown dead. Chase Boyer, a six foot, 191 pound sophomore, looking like a veteran out there on the hands team or the kick team for St. Genevieve, getting downfield and grabbing a hold of the much smaller return man and driving him back and into the turf. A good showing for the special team from St. Genevieve right there. For Potosi, it's going to be first and 10 from their own 23-yard line. I talked to Coach Casey before this game. He said they do have some things in the bag of tricks, but we have yet to see those so far. Have one receiver spread to the near side. Huerta is going to go under center. It's an end around to Tristan Brown, and St. Genevieve all over it. Starting to get Tristan Brown a little bit more involved here in the third quarter are the Potosi Trojans, but it didn't do much right there. Up front, St. Genevieve is so difficult to deal with when you have A.J. Gons, Morgan Shank, Logan Dowdy. You could go on and on. Austin Brewer, Anthony Rowe, Griminger, Reinhardt. There's so many names out there that if you put all 11 names on the both defensive sides in a hat, you're going to pull out probably seven or eight St. Genevieve Dragons. Their defense is just loaded. 
The Trojans face a second and 12 from their own 21. Where to under center. He's going to keep it himself and try to come around the near side and nowhere to go once again. The St. Genevieve front seven playing out of their mind so far in the third quarter. Went right back to the line of scrimmage, did Jordan Huerta, and not much further than that. So that's a two-yard loss for Tristan Brown. Then a rush for no gain for Jordan Huerta. Now third and 12 for the Trojans. The offense starting to struggle. The defense for St. Jen starting to play a little better. It's third and 12 from the 21. Huerta looking to throw. He has to shake one defender. He stays on his feet, jumps, and gets it away. And it's going to be caught right at the first down marker. What a play. Potosi Trojans getting right back up to the first down marker. A great catch on the sideline by Chandler Franklin. They have yet to move the chains. Now they're going to signal that it was indeed a first down, a great third down pickup for Potosi. Jordan Huerta, his fourth completion of the night. He is now four of eight. And three of those four to Chandler Franklin. Huerta back under center, split backs behind him. They're going to pitch it to the far side. It's Kyle Allison looking to find the edge and around the corner. And he's not going to be able to turn the corner. Good pursuit, sideline to sideline by the St. Genevieve linebacking core to get over there and close the edge. Kyle Allison pushed out of bounds on the far side. Looks like he picked up about four. That's the 10th carry for Kyle Allison. Brings up second down and a lengthy five for Potosi. Ball spotted at the Trojan 38, lined up on the far hash. Huerta will go back under center with Price and Allison in the backfield. Franklin lined up on the wing. As soon as the snap, a flag comes in from the side Juds, and now a flag comes in from the back. The Potosi faithful likes that one. We'll see how they offset. And I'm thinking that, it, if anything, St. Genevieve may be the ones that back up on this after the officials get together at midfield and try to get this one right. Was talking with a couple of the officials prior to the game, some very experienced officials. We have two officials with a white hat, over 30 years of experience in officiating tonight. So you don't get that too often. But when you get down to the nitty gritty and the, the cream of the crop as far as the teams, the officials come right along with that. So the officiating uh, the rest of the way, probably some of the best that we'll see all year long. And they definitely want to get this call right. Two flags came in at the, one flag came in right at the snap. The second flag came in from the back judge. But no signal just yet on what the flags were for. Now the Dragons start to back up. So that gives you some indication on what we might see. And now the coaching staff starting to come out for St. Genevieve on the far side. Now Coach Casey will get his explanation on the near side. Looks like one penalty going to be declined on the far side. And it will back up St. Genevieve. So it's going to be a major penalty against St. Genevieve. So they were both going to benefit Potosi. It was just a matter of which one would be more beneficial. And now the ball is spotted on the Dragon 46 after it's all said and done. So that's a big penalty right there against St. Genevieve for Potosi. You have to make the most of it. You haven't done that yet so far. So first and 10 from the Dragon 46. Where to back under center with split backs behind him. And it's Franklin on the wing. The official blows the whistle and the clock starts to wind. Huerta takes the snap, turns around, hands it off, and it's Allison with Price out front and just nowhere to go for the run game so far in the third quarter for Potosi. The St. Genevieve defense closing every gap. Brings up second and 10 after no gain. Kyle Allison stood up again. And the run game hasn't done a whole lot for Potosi so far. They ended up having 
77 first half rushing yards. Second and 10 from the 46, 423 to go in the third quarter. Where to under center, split backs behind him and the ball pops out on the handoff. And it's St. Genevieve football, the third turnover of the night by the Potosi Trojans. And this time it comes on the quarterback handoff exchange to the running back and St. Genevieve is gonna start with pretty good field position following another Trojan turnover. Their third turnover of the evening and still a lot of football left to play. 4.16 to go in the third and the Dragons a 21-6 lead and the offense comes back out after the takeaway. The first and 10 from the 48. Logan Reinhardt spread right. Rowe and Brewer in the backfield. They're gonna hand it off, go right up the middle and a big push up front by the St. Genevieve offensive line. And Anthony Rowe out in front blocking for Austin Brewer. Brewer picks up four. And we are inside of four minutes to go. The 15th carry for Brewer so far. Reinhardt again spread right. Lala Madeer under center, split backs behind him. They're going to hand it off. It's this time to Anthony Rowe. Has to spin his way up the middle. He was met right at the line of scrimmage and had to spin free from one defender just to pick up positive yardage. He only gets a couple. It'll bring up third down. Anthony Rowe's 11th carry of the evening. Goes for two yards. Brings up third and five from the Trojan 47. Lala Deer will go under center. Split backs behind him. Reinhardt spread right. The snap, it's tossed to Rowe. Rowe's going to punch his way up the middle. He's going to be short of the first down marker, but not by much. Anthony Rowe, already over 100 yards tonight with two touchdowns. Austin Brewer making his way towards 100. He already has one touchdown. The Dragons face a third and five from the 43 in Trojan territory. One receiver right is Reinhardt. Split backs behind Lalamandir. The snap, they hand it off going up the middle. It's Brewer. He'll pick up the first down. He didn't need to get too far, but able to pick that one up. And it'll keep the drive alive. St. Genevieve run game marching down the field once again. They have yet to complete a pass this evening. Brewer picks up a couple on his 16th carry of the evening. Makes it first and 10 from the Trojan 39. Lollamandir back under center with two backs in the backfield. Hands it off to Brewer. Brewer has to make one tackler miss just to get out of the backfield. And pushed out of bounds for no gain. Clock stops at 2.22. And St. Genevieve leading this contest at 21.6. So they spot it as a one yard loss. And Reinhardt will spread back out right as St. Genevieve comes up to the line with a second and 11 from the 40. Rowan Brewer split in the backfield, Lamandier under center. He takes the snap, they're gonna hand it off quickly up the middle, it's Rowe getting a good push, he breaks out of the pile, he's still running. He's gonna cross the 20 before being pushed out of bounds. Another big run from Anthony Rowe it's a first down for the St. Genevieve Dragons and a 20-yard run for Anthony Rowe. He has runs of 20, 35, and 44 so far tonight. So he's broken off a couple of big runs, and that one was a pretty big run right there for St. Genevieve as your offense was starting to struggle. And as soon as they started to struggle, Rowe breaks one and gets down to the 21. First and 10 at the 21. Reinhardt comes to the near side as the lone receiver. Lala Medeer goes under center with Rowe and Brewer split in the backfield. They're gonna hand it off quickly, going right up the middle to Austin Brewer. And Brewer picks up about five. 17 touches already for Austin Brewer so far. 140 to go in the third quarter. And St. Genevieve marching downfield, trying to add to their 21-6 lead. The last time St. Genevieve lost was week two of the regular season. Lollamandir pitches. It's Rowe going around the outside edge. Shakes, makes a tackler miss. Cuts back inside before being brought down just short of the first down marker. 
will be third and short coming up for St. Genevieve. Ball on the 13, third and two. One minute to go in the third quarter, 20 on the play clock. Reinhardt all by himself over there on the far side of the field as Lala Madeer gets set under center with Rowe and Brewer in the backfield. The snap, they pitch to Brewer. Brewer around the outside edge to the right, fighting for a couple more yards. He'll pick up the first down, get inside the 10 before being brought down at about the seven. First down. Already 18 carries so far tonight for Austin Brewer. Having a big night so far as the St. Genevieve run game doing everything so far with Lala Deer not even attempting a pass so far in the third quarter after going 0 for 6 in the first half. Reinhardt comes to the near side, spread out wide, lined up on the far hash. Lollamadeer under center with Rowe and Brewer split in the backfield. The handoff is faked to Rowe, handed off to Brewer. Brewer lunges forward, and he's going to be just short of the goal line. 20 seconds and counting in the third quarter. Be interesting to see if St. Genevieve decides to just let that expire. They very well could, but they're going ahead to line up with five, four, three, two. They've got to snap it now, and they do. And they're going to go ahead and snap it off, hand it off right before the end of the third quarter. And it is a touchdown right at the end of the third quarter with five seconds to go. St. Genevieve decides they're going to go ahead and run a play to end the third quarter, and they run a play for a touchdown. Again, this time, Anthony Rowe getting into the end zone just one yard away, his third touchdown of the night, and it's 27-6. St. Genevieve starting to pull away from the Potosi Trojans. Giesler comes out for the extra point. The snap, the hold, the kick. It's away cleanly, and it's up and through. Now it's 28 to six. St. Genevieve pads that lead at the end of the third quarter. So we'll start the first qu fourth quarter with a kickoff up next after St. Genevieve adds the lead. It's 28-6 Dragons. We have a kickoff up next. It's Web TV. <laughs> Hi, neighbor. The new landscaping around your yard looks great. Oh, thanks. We're doing home improvements. Doing it all with Potosi Lumber. Really? We're replacing cabinets, new carpet, new storm doors, and customized replacement windows. And that's just to start. It's time for home improvements. See Potosi Lumber, Highway 21 in Potosi. The St. Genevieve Dragons starting to look like the St. Genevieve Dragons here in the second half. It's now 28 to six with St. Genevieve extending their lead as the buzzer sounded in the third quarter, snapping a play in the final seconds. And getting into the end zone, extra point went up and through from Giesler. And now the Dragons lead by 22 over the Potosi Trojans. The Trojans have yet to score a touchdown tonight. All six coming off of the foot of Kyle Oja. The Potosi has had turnover issues, offensive issues. And St. Genevieve has only had what seems to be passing issues. They have yet to complete a pass so far tonight, have yet to attempt a pass so far in the second half. And the Dragons set to kick off. They'll be kicking from left to right as we get things started in the fourth quarter. And the Potosi Trojans will be working right to left. It's a low squib kick. Going to dribble out to the 25-yard line before being fielded by an up man who's going to streak down the sideline for a good return before being tripped up and pushed out of bounds. That was Skyler Ring making the tackle on special teams, keeping that from being a long return. We are on the final quarter, 28-6 St. Genevieve leading the Potosi Trojans in round two of district football action. A lot of games around the listening area. We're back at full strength this week with four games across regional radio. And it seemed like that Central Kennett game might come down to the wire. 
The Farmington Hillsboro game was very, very lopsided. I'd be surprised to see if they're not in a running clock yet. Jefferson had their hands full with Carnahan and St. Genevieve starting to pull away from Potosi on Web TV. Now a weird formation. This is that bag of tricks that we thought we were going to see from Potosi. Here it is. A quick pa pass to the near side, and that's the quarterback, Jordan Huerta, catching the pass. So your number two running back, Zach Price, that's your number two running back, just completed a pass to your starting quarterback. So very interesting play call right there. It only picks up a couple of yards, but it's something I really had expected to see earlier from Potosi. And they're going to do that again. The tackles are going to line up wide. The tackles are in the correct uniform, not eligible downfield. The stacked receivers are. And that's Zach Price coming up with another one and going to the far side. And it did not matter on that play. As soon as the screen pass was caught on the far side, St. Genevieve was already in the backfield, ready to make the tackle. The pass, however, was complete. It just went backwards. So Zach Price is two for two, but unfortunately he has negative three yards. So it makes it third and 15 from the 37. I don't know if they're gonna do it again, are they? And yes, they are. Here comes the left tackle lined up on the hash. So third and 15 from the 37, and the trick plays have come out for the Trojans. Here's the snap. Price looking to throw quick. Fires one through the hands of the defender. I think that was Griminger that got a hand on it. It was. But Zach Price has a rocket of an arm, and they were trying to use it right there. Unfortunately, just tipped and deflected. So after completing the first two, they try to throw one a little further downfield for Price, and it falls incomplete. So for Potosi... You've taken all of 53 seconds off of the clock on this possession. Now you're looking at a fourth and 15 from the 37, so you're going to have to punt it away for St. Jen. Do you go in kill clock mode with a 22-point lead? Return man for the Dragons at the 29. The punt will come from the 27. It's a nice punt, hung up forever, fielded at the 30. Coming to the near side, a lot of room for Brewster. He cuts across midfield, another big-time return for Brewster, getting into Potosi Trojan territory, a 26-yard return for Luke Brewster, and just gashing the special teams for the Potosi Trojans. That was a big run there, 10.53. To go in the fourth quarter, the Dragons are about to start a drive from the Potosi 45-yard line. Have scored on the first two drives of this half. Nine-yard run for Brewer and a short run for Rowe. That's 28-6, now first and 10 from the 45 in Trojan territory. Lalamandir under center, split backs behind him. He's going to pull it out and call his own number, and if he gets to the outside edge, you can kiss him goodbye. No, oh, he's going to break one tackle, and he does stay on his feet. Thank you for making me sound smart, Wyatt Lalamandir, and running a 45-yard touchdown, extending that to a 34-6 lead. If he gets the edge, you can forget about it. Wyatt Lalamandir goes into the end zone, 45 yards. St. Genevieve, one play. Touchdown, forget about it. 34 to six and the extra point to come. St. Genevieve starting to pour it on here in the second half. Wyatt Lalamandir got the edge, broke a tackle, and he has the wheels when he gets on the outside edge. For about the past year and a half now, he reminds me so much of a, a, a poor man's Colin Kaepernick of two years ago, not this year's, but a couple years ago. He just has that skill set. Giesler sends the extra point up and through, and that makes it 35-6. to six. The St. Genevieve Dragons starting to pour it on. It's a 29-point advantage with 10.44 to go in the fourth quarter. We're going to be back with another kickoff in 30 seconds on Web TV. Do you want to buy a home or car? Need to spruce up your kitchen or bathroom? Or maybe you want to start a business, consolidate debt, or go on vacation? Whatever the case, Bloomsdale Bank has a variety of real estate, consumer, and commercial loans. So when you need a home equity line of credit, a fixed rate mortgage, a new or used auto loan, or a commercial loan, contact a loan officer at Bloomsdale Bank or apply online at bloomsdalebank.com. Bloomsdale Bank, connected to our customers since 1914. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. 
That drive for the St. Genevieve Dragons took all of nine seconds, and that nine seconds was all Wyatt Lollamandeer keeping a quarterback option to the near side, going 45 yards into the end zone. Luke Brewster with a good return to start St. Genevieve in Trojan territory, and they made the most of it in a hurry, and they lead this one 35-6 to with 10.44 to go in the fourth quarter. The Dragons looking dominant. Giesler, a low liner, fielding it off the hop at the 26, going up the middle and being brought down at about the 38-yard line, and that's where the Trojans will start this drive and still looking to score their first touchdown of the night. Tough sledding against the St. Genevieve defense so far. And Potosi, I imagine the offense just caught their breath after the one-play touchdown. And here they are trying to come right back out on the field and sustain some kind of drive. 10.38 to go in the fourth quarter. It's first and 10 from the 38. The Trojans send two receivers to the right. Huerta will go under center, split backs behind him. And they're going to hand it off to Price. Price coming to the near side, makes one tackler miss, bounces into another, and able to pick up about five yards. Zach Price, an aggressive runner for the Potosi Trojans. Spent a good portion of the year at quarterback, just out of necessity, really. They didn't really have a true quarterback on their team this year. They started the year with Zach Price starting as the quarterback after the St. Genevieve game in week four. That was all changed due to, uh, really, once again, necessity as several players went down in that game, and that moved Jordan Huerta to the quarterback position where he's been ever since. So here's Huerta leading his team out on the field as Franklin and Brown spread out right. Second and six from the 42. Huerta will go under center with Price and Allison split behind him. The official holding up play just for a second. Now they're going to go ahead and blow the whistle, wind the clock. Where to set and ready. They're going to hand it off right up the middle, get the good push. They'll pick up the first down and a couple extra. So the two receivers on the outside edge, essentially just a decoy, but it does enough to create the gap in the middle for the Trojans to pick up the first down. Zach Price pushing his way through. Be first and 10 from the St. Genevieve, oh, from the Trojan 49. So he barely, barely picked up that first down after the spot. So first and 10 from the 50. 10-11 to go in this game. Two receivers to the right. And that's where Huerta's going, a jump pass, and he gets it to the receiver. It was Franklin. And Franklin catches that one for about five yards. Jordan Huerta completing probably the most passes tonight that he has all season long. Chandler Franklin came into tonight with 21 receptions all season long. And that was his fifth of the night so far. With Chandler Franklin, 21 receptions over 10 games and has five tonight. Second and seven as the Trojans break their way into Dragon territory at the 47. The two receivers come to the near side of the field. Split backs behind where to under center. They're going to hand it off to Price and let him fight for a couple yards up the middle. And the ball pops out at the end of it. Yeah, it looks like Potosi may have come up with it. That is the official from the back judge. It is still Trojan football. Nearly another turnover. The Potosi Trojans have turned the ball over three times tonight. Now they face a third and seven inside of nine minutes to go. 8.57 and counting. 20 on the play clock as the Trojans break the huddle. Franklin and Brown come to the near side of the formation. Split backs behind Huerta. Under center, he takes the snap. Quick screen. Here it is to Brown, and it was a backwards pass, but they're going to call it incomplete. Interesting. That was uh, almost a straight pass. It was definitely a backwards pass hitting off the hands of Tristan Brown and Brown had the same reaction I did. Better get on that football before St. Genevieve does but the official on the sideline blew it dead as an incompletion so that'll freeze the clock at 843 and it will bring up third and six from the St. Genevieve Dragon 46 yard line. Potosi still in the huddle with 19, 18, 17 on the play clock. Now they break out Two receivers come to the near side of the field, nearly stacked. 
Huerta is going to go under center, looking to throw it again. He's looking to, no, he has to shake pressure now and just throw it away. And pass is complete to the far side. But they're going to be well short of the first down marker. The pass was complete to Hollinsworth. And Jordan Huerta completes his sixth pass of the night, but unfortunately it results in a turnover on downs. But Jordan Huerta, 6 of 10, quietly through this contest. For Potosi, it's a turnover on downs, and St. Genevieve will take back over. It's been a punt, a turnover, and a turnover on downs so far through the second half for Potosi. And St. Genevieve is going to start a drive with pretty good field position on their own 49-yard line. It'll be first and 10 from their own 49, 8.35 to go in the fourth quarter. 35-6 lead for the Dragons. Wallamadeer under center, split backs. No, it's an eye behind him. He's going to keep it, roll to the near side, comes up throwing, finds the receiver there, and they're going to finally complete something this evening. That's Blake Moore coming up with the catch. The first reception of the night so far goes for eight yards for St. Genevieve, brings up second and two. And a platoon swap for St. Genevieve after that play. But with a 35 to six score, 805 and counting. Looks like we're gonna see all new personnel come out on the field for St. Genevieve. They definitely feel like this one's in the bag. And I wouldn't say that they were too far from wrong. So it looks like we have a timeout on the field <laughs> trying to switch personnel with a play clock running. Didn't go too well for St. Genevieve, but the good news for them, everything else has gone well so far. So as they take a timeout, we'll step aside for 30 seconds and bring you back more high school football on Web TV. Jimmy John's America's number one sandwich delivery, home of subs so fast you freak, including subs, slims, and giant clubs. Proudly preparing a plethora of palate pleasing products using fresh meats, fresh veggies, and fresh baked bread. Served here in the store and delivered freaky fast to your domicile. And don't forget our world famous Jimmy Chips and Jimmy Cookies and our fabulous catering services featuring box lunches, 15 and 30 piece party colliders, and two, four, and six foot subs. This is Ed. How may I help you? Wow, that sounds good. I'll have that. You'll have what, ma'am? What you just said? I'm on my way. Jimmy John's, located on Maple Street in Farmington, delivers seven days a week. Call 756 FAST. That's 756 F A S T. 35 to 6 is our score with 7 minutes and 50 seconds remaining in the fourth and final quarter of play. It looks like the St. Genevieve Dragons are going to advance on to the next round of the high school football district playoffs. Some close matchups throughout the uh, regional radio airwaves this evening. Central a one score lead over Kennett in the fourth quarter. And as we see a platoon swap here for St. Genevieve, we're going to see a whole bunch of fresh faces come in. We'll try to run down as many as we possibly can. There's pretty much 11 new faces on the field for St. Genevieve. And a score like this, they're basically going to pull all the starters off and let them watch the rest of this one. So we saw Matt Hurst just come in. Skylar Ring just left the field. Across the front line, we have Dakota Evers. A lot of names to get to still. Going under center now is this number 18, which Drew Toombs. This handoff coming to the near side to Wade Hahn. So a bunch of fresh faces coming in for St. Genevieve and pretty much what you expect in this scenario when you've got a game locked up and it's the postseason. It's about the best way you can go about it. Oh, everybody getting a, a taste as they keep rotating more and more guys in. St. Genevieve just trying to run this game down. They're going to have to kick this one away with a fourth and five. Here comes the punt. It gets away cleanly. It's going to hang up for quite a bit, but not go too far. And it takes a huge St. Gen hop. They're going to go ahead and field it for the Trojans and be brought down at about the 22-yard line. Back there to make that stop, Bryce Bonnert. And Chandler Franklin decided to go ahead and return it for a couple. And Potosi's offense will come back out with 6.23 to go. And they're going to start a drive just short of their own 20. At about the 18-yard line. So it'll be first and 10 from the 18. So for Jordan Huerta, Calvin Michael, Chandler Franklin, Dylan King, Dusty Douglas, Trevor Husky, Jake Neff, 
Colby Boyer, Kyle Castillo, Jared Deal, and Eli Hampton. This will be their final game in a Trojan uniform. So I want to definitely acknowledge those guys as Potosi runs one right up the middle. Still uh, showing that fight are the Trojans fighting hard all the way from whistle to whistle. That will keep the clock moving as the Trojans run it right up the middle. We'll be inside of six minutes in the fourth quarter after the next snap. And personnel changes just keep coming on in for St. Genevieve. For Potosi, the starters still out there. Huerta's going to go back under center. It's Tristan Brown spread out to the right. And Huerta is going to keep it and go around the outside edge. Jump cut, come back inside the middle, and he'll be brought down at about the 25-yard line, a four-yard pickup for Jordan Huerta. That four-yard pickup will make it third and three. And clock's just going to keep on ticking away in this one, a 35-6 to six score. We're not in a running clock, but the way this game has been going, everybody uh, running the football tonight. Didn't see a whole lot of passing of tips from St. Genevieve. As a matter of fact, uh, one for seven tonight was Wyatt Lallamadeer. His only completion, his last snap of the game before the second team came in for the Dragons. Potosi, the first team offense is out there with a third and three. Four on the play clock. Huerta goes back under center, pitching it, coming around the outside edge and picking up the first down and then some. Shaking is Kyle Allison spinning and picking up a few more, being brought down just short of the 35-yard line. And a nine-yard pickup for Kyle Allison. His 12th carry of the evening. And for Kyle Allison, he'll be back next year. Tristan Brown will be back next year. Zach Price will be back next year. So a lot of guys will return next year for Potosi. Tristan Brown looks like he's going to spread out right. Jordan Huerta will go under center with Price and Allison in the backfield. They pitch into the backfield. And no, that's Chandler Franklin in the backfield getting the senior some touches on his final high school football game in the Trojan uniform as this is four and a half minutes away from going final to St. Jen Dragons up 35-6 on the Potosi Trojans. The clock will continue to run. 20 on the play clock and the Trojans still in the huddle. Down to 15 and they just come out. 4-10 on the game clock. Second and seven from the 38. Huerta back under center, split backs behind him. One receiver spread left, and Huerta is going to call his own number, come to the outside edge, and pick up the first down, depending on the spot. Let's see if what they give him on the spot. It looked like he picked it up on the spot that he initially went down, and they do have him spotted for the first down, so an eight-yard pickup for Jordan Huerta, his longest run of the night on his fifth carry. That'll move the chains, keep the drive alive for the Potosi Trojans who have not scored a touchdown tonight. All six points coming by way of field goal. Well, Tristan Brown spreads to the far side. Huerta back under center. Split backs behind him. And it's going to be a pitch to the far side. It's Franklin again with a hard, aggressive run around the outside edge for four yards. And Chandler Franklin getting a few touches here in the final moments of his high school career. I mean, in a situation like this, you might as well put all of your seniors out there and just let them go for the next three minutes and 20 seconds. As the St. Gen Dragons are definitely the ones moving on to the next round with a 35-6 lead and just about out of time with 3-10 in the fourth quarter. It's a second and seven for the Trojans on the 48 on the Potosi side of the field. One receiver spread to the far side, and Huerta keeps it himself, has to escape pressure. He breaks the pocket, lunges forward, and it looks like he's going to pick up another first down. His two longest carries of the night were on back-to-back -back plays, but then again you are running against um, a second-team defense for St. Genevieve that is completely fresh. So to counter those two statements... Inside of three minutes to go, first and 10 from the Dragon, 44 for the Potosi Trojan offense. Jordan Huerta is going to stay out there under center. Tristan Brown to the far side of the field, split backs behind Huerta. There's the snap. Huerta is going to keep it looking downfield. He's going to throw. He finds Zach Price for a couple yards. So Jordan Huerta, two-yard completion to Zach Price. Price brought down in the field of play. Clock will continue to run, and Huerta now 7 of 11 on the night. 
He threw 29 passes all season before tonight, and has or completed 29, has thrown 61 all season long. That's half of a season, but has thrown 11 tonight. Second and nine from the Dragon, 43 for the Potosi offense. Huerta back under center, one receiver spread to the near side of the field, split backs behind him, the handoff to the up man. He's gonna fight for a couple more yards, and finally, be brought down after picking up another first down. So first down after first down after first down here for Potosi. But they are running out of time. That was again up the middle and they're feeding the senior the football. Let him get his touches at the last portion of his high school career. Quite a few seniors on the Trojan football team. Ten seniors, but a very small freshman class. So they're going to have to reload over the next couple of seasons. The Trojans keep fighting hard. That run heads to the right side for a couple of yards. And we are just a couple of plays away from giving you a final score. 125 and counting in the fourth quarter. Potosi's offense... First team still out on the field. Now the play clock starts to run down to 20 and 115 on the game clock. It's second and six from the 30 for the Trojans. Two receivers to the left, a shotgun formation for the first time tonight. Rolling to the near side, it's Huerta. He's just going to heave one into the end zone, and it's going to be caught and walking into the end zone for a touchdown is the Potosi Trojans. They finally get into the end zone for the first time tonight. On a pitch and catch from Jordan Huerta going into the corner of the end zone. And that was caught by Tristan Brown. Tristan Brown catches his first pass of the night. It goes for a touchdown. And that makes it 35-12 as the Trojans get into the end zone with one minute to go in this contest. That's their first touchdown of the evening. So Jordan Huerta leads his team to one final touchdown on the tail end of his high school career. It's definitely a cool thing you like to see in that situation for Coach Casey. Just tell him, air it out, get one before the end of this one. And he gets the job done. They're going to go ahead and go for two on this one with two receivers spread out to the right. They're going to run that same formation and that pistol with two men in the backfield offset on either side. Where it takes a high snap, puts it into the belly of number 52, Jake Neff. That's a senior lineman running in a two-point conversion. Love seeing stuff like that. Unfortunately, a cool play like that, it's kind of come at the tail end of your Potosi Trojan football career. That makes it 35 to 14 with one minute to go from announcing a final score. We're gonna have uh, some interesting scores come in as we are rolling through week two of the district playoffs. So you definitely wanna stick around later tonight on regional radio for our end zone program. That's the Presbyterian Manor of Farmington end zone show that we've been recapping all the games all season long. And that's not going to change for round two of district play. We'll catch up with all the coaches that we've had on the airwaves tonight. And some of the coaches that we did not have on the airwaves tonight like Herculaneum's David Cook, they're gonna fall this evening and their season will come to a close. St. Vincent is going to see their season come to a close tonight against Valley Catholic. Well, we'll try to catch up with all of those coaches tonight. But first and foremost, we've got one minute left on the play clock from St. Genevieve High School. The Dragons are going to advance in the district playoffs, and the Potosi Trojans are going to see their season come to a close at 5-6. and six. For St. Gen, this is going to be their 10th win of the season. They'll improve to 10-1. and one. And it's the first time since 2012 and 11 that the Dragons have had 10 win seasons. Here's the kickoff fielded at the 12. It's going to be returned across the 20 to the 25 and brought down right at the 25 yard line. Six seconds comes off the clock. But we're inside of a minute. And the Trojans are going to fall to five and six. Their season will come to a close. They ended up going one and four over their last five games of the season. The only win, that first round district win against St. Pius, a 25 to eight win last week on G98. For this week, it comes to a close. For St. Genevieve, they're going to advance through the district playoffs. And they are looking like the team to beat. Don't know who their opponent's gonna be just yet. That game's gonna come down to the wire before we know who wins that one. But we'll try to keep an update on that. 
And St. Genevieve's second team offense gonna keep running the football and try to keep clock ticking away. It only gets one play and the second team offense turns it over. That's the first turnover of the night for St. Genevieve. Fortunately, it comes with 49 seconds to go and your second team on the field. So the Trojans get one more crack at it on the offensive side. With 49 seconds to go, they'll send the offense out and start a drive on the St. Genevieve 27-yard line. So right now, it looks like Central holding on to a one-score lead over Kennett. So that's a close game there. That's going to come down to the wire. First and 10 from the 27 for the Potosi Trojans. And Huerta takes the pistol snap, throws it over the middle, and looking to find Franklin across the middle. It's going to fall incomplete. 7 of 12 this evening as Jordan Huerta with one touchdown pass. His one touchdown pass to Tristan Brown. And 44 seconds on the game clock. Second and 10 from the 27. Farmington all over Hillsborough, 40 to 14 in the fourth quarter. That's a formality the rest of the way there. The pistol snap, Huerta pumps to the screen, throw into the end zone, and is it going to be caught? No, a little bit too far inside. Again, looking to fire into the end zone. That's going to fall to the turf, and it'll freeze the clock with 38 seconds to go and bring up a third down for the Potosi Trojans on the Dragon 27-yard line. Just 38 seconds left in this contest. And we can finally say that St. Genevieve will advance officially. We've got a few more plays to run. The pistol formation again for Potosi. And it's going to be a handoff around the outside edge, turning the corner, and I don't think anybody saw this one coming. Cutting back inside, reversing field, staying on his feet, and being tripped up and falling down inside the 10. That was a good run for Dylan King. Dylan King, a senior. That was an impressive run. Good field vision for a guy that doesn't get a lot of touches out of the backfield. I don't know if he's had many all season long, but he gets a few right there. The clock now starts to run up there. The official blows the whistle on that one. But now the Trojans with the ball on the 10 yard line. And goal to go. Pistol formation. They snap to Huerta. Huerta jumps. He cuts back. Cuts back inside again. Stays on his feet. And he's finally going to be brought down after gaining a couple. And that will do it for this contest. Jordan Huerta runs the football for two yards. And the clock will run out. And it's 35-14 to 14 as our final score as the St. Genevieve Dragons will advance in the district playoffs as they improve to 10 and 1. The first 10 win season for St. Genevieve since 2012 when they went 10 and 2. The Potosi Trojans see their season come to a close at 6 and 5. Definitely a big game on the ground tonight for the St. Genevieve Dragons as they advance and they're going to play the winner of our J98 game of the week this week between Central and Kennett. That game uh, still going on. Going to come down to the wire for our web TV broadcast. I had the call for you tonight. I'm Greg Armbruster. It was Jack Sadler behind the lens. That's going to conclude our broadcast for Web TV and round two of district play. Make sure you catch end zone tonight on regional radio.